Eventually they drifted apart, and each of them found comfort in other relationships. Jane with a family friend, Jonathan, here pouring champagne at dinner. Stephen with one of his nurses, Elaine, using the telephone in his office. In 1995, they were finally divorced, and Hawking married Elaine. Two years later, Jane married Jonathan. The Hawkings' extraordinary partnership had lasted for 25 years. But in the end, the stresses and strains of their situation had broken them apart. Though designed to be a bestseller, the phenomenal success of A Brief History of Time still took everyone by surprise. It was bought, though not necessarily read, by millions of people around the world. The film rights were snapped up, and a feature-length documentary was made, narrated by Hawking himself. If we do discover a complete theory of the universe, it would be the ultimate triumph of human reason. For then we would know the mind of God. The way that Hawking spoke about the universe gave people a sense of its wonder and mystery. His voice and distinctive delivery only added to his aura. Silence has enormous power. And then when you deal with Stephen, there are pauses. One tends to fill in those pauses with uh, insecure thoughts. And so, what's he thinking of me? Is he going to respond? And that, that gives to Stephen even more power than he would ordinarily command, uh, which is a great deal. At first, people had to read the screen to see what I was saying. But about a year later, I got this voice. I have stuck with it, because I now identify myself with it. People sometimes poke fun by imitating it, but I regard that as a sign of success, and it has become my trademark. For advertisers, the Hawking brand was a dream. Triumph over adversity, intellect, integrity, and unforgettable presence. Speech has allowed the communication of ideas, enabling human beings to work together. I was reading, or pretending to read this book, A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. Um, I couldn't understand a word of it, but it was trendy to think you could read it at the time. And he also had a program on television to accompany this book. And we saw it, and there was this amazing voice. The very fact that he talks like he does, I think, just lends that greater gravitas, I suppose, to the whole thing. But um, Because he is who he is, isn't it? I yeah. mean, he's, he is the supreme thinker. The fact that he spoke like he did, and the fact that he sat in a wheelchair, and uh, that's the Stephen Hawking package. That's what you buy into. Our greatest hopes could become reality in the future. With the technology at our disposal, the possibilities are unbounded. All we need to do is make sure we keep talking. In a culture that worships beauty, Stephen is not classically beautiful. But when you look at him, what comes through is this intellect, this amazing intellect. And that seems to me to be a portal to what is intellect about? It's, it's about the quest for knowledge. And what is that about? That's the quest for truth. And the notion is, or the feeling you get, is that Stephen can somehow give you access to, or some portal to, the truth. In his commercials, Hawking only ever talked about big ideas, not products. For me, physics is about seeing further, better, and deeper. 
advertisers were simply riding on the back of an image of modern day genius. And from here, I can see forever. It's a bit like the oracles of ancient times who had to be blind or something wrong with them. Some severe physical disability, and this meant that they had magical powers. They could, they could see the future and things like this. And so I think people tend to treat Stephen rather in this way because he has these disabilities. And so he has this... People think of him as an oracle for quite the wrong reasons. I mean, it has nothing to do with the reasons behind what he says. The words brilliant and genius probably get used way too much. But my guest tonight deserves both of them and more. Professor Stephen William Hawking is the greatest mind in physics since Albert Einstein. Stephen Hawking, the world's smartest man. What are you doing here? I don't know which is the bigger disappointment. My failure to formulate a unified field theory, or you. I don't like your tone. If you are looking for trouble, you found it. Yeah, just try me, you... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Like Einstein before him, Hawking has now moved far beyond the world of science to become an icon of popular culture. But though he may be the most famous physicist in the world, fellow scientists take a cooler, more objective view of his status as a genius. There's no way that he's another Einstein. He's one of the best of the ordinary people, if you like. And to name somebody comparable, obviously Roger Penrose, that he did a lot of work with. Roger's uh, just as bright and has done equally important work, but he's not idolised and fated. I think the word great is, is a difficult one to apply to a scientist. And in my view, it would really only apply to somebody who has really made a fundamental change in the way we view things, a fundamental new equation or something, which would apply to Einstein, certainly, or to Newton, Stephen hasn't quite done that. Comparisons with Newton and Einstein are just media hype. Among physicists, I'm respected, I hope. But I'm just one of a number of people who have helped shape our modern view of the universe. We all need to know where we belong, and where we came from. I fit the stereotype of a disabled genius, in that I'm clearly disabled. But I'm not a genius, like Einstein was. Like Einstein, however, he is spending the last years of his life on a quest for the holy grail of physics, the theory of everything, a law that will explain everything in the universe. His childhood fascination with the way things work still dominates his thoughts. Next to that, the illness that appears to define him is irrelevant. If I had the choice between finding the theory of everything and regaining my mobility, I would have to choose the theory of everything. It is that which has given my life purpose. All children ask questions. How do things work? Why are they the way they are? I'm just a child that has never grown up. I still keep asking these how and why questions. Occasionally, I find an answer. The universe began with a hot Big Bang. But will it go on forever? And if not, how will it end? <laughs> 